Hello and welcome to the Bearded Math Man's YouTube channel. Hey, in this uh, lesson, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about how to visually understand and predict the number of x-intercepts or solutions to quadratic equations. And it's really useful because if you can determine right away that there aren't any x-intercepts, then you don't have to do the algebra to find them because, well, you know ahead of time there won't be there. So let's get into it, shall we? Here's our goal, once and for all. Overall, what we're trying to do is we're trying to see if there's a way we can determine if there's going to be one, two, or none x-intercepts. Zero x-intercepts, one intercept, or two. So here are three examples of our cases. We have examples here where there are no x-intercepts. We have an example here in the middle. There's exactly one x-intercept. And here on the right, these two parabolas have two x-intercepts. So this is two separate graphs. This is one graph, and this is two graphs, all kind of laid over each other so we can kind of see how they look, right? And there's a clue as to what we're going to be doing here. So like, you see this vertex? It's in quadrant number one. And the direction of the, par of the parabola is up. You see the vertex? It's either the smallest point or the highest point. And this right here is the smallest point because it's going up. And it's uh, starting off above the x-intercept, so it won't cross. Same here, but the other way around. It's below the x-intercept, and it's going down. Whereas here, this vertex, it's the maximum value. It's going down from there, but it starts off above the x-axis, so it's going to go down. It's going to cross it twice. Whereas this one here, the vertex is below the x-axis. The parabola is going up, means a, the leading coefficient, is positive. So it starts off, the vertex is below the x-intercept, it goes up, means it's going to cross twice. We're going to talk about that today in this lesson, right? Now, uh, the way we're going to kind of go about this visually, there are other ways, uh, there are some algebraic ways to determine the number of, of x-intercepts, but visually, just thinking about what the vertex is and the sign of the leading coefficient, a, we're going to see how, a way to figure out really quick if there are no x-intercepts. So for example, let's just use this point right here, 2, negative 1. That is the vertex of this quadratic equation. This is in vertex form, and this is in the fourth quadrant. You see how a is positive? Well, if the vertex is in the fourth quadrant, then it's below the x-axis. If it's below the x-axis and the parabola goes up, it's going to cross twice. So if a is positive and the vertex is in the fourth quadrant, two x-intercepts. If a is negative, it's going to go down. There's going to be none. So like, for example, here, this is the graph of x minus 2 squared minus 1. Vertex is in the fourth quadrant, which is below the x-axis. The parabola is going up, so it's going to cross two times. There's going to be two x-intercepts. Whereas if we had a different one, so like, for example, if it was negative x minus 2 squared minus 1. Here, a is negative 1. In the previous one, a was positive 1. If a is positive, the parabola goes up. If a is negative, the parabola goes down. So if you're starting off, if your vertex, which is your maximum value when a is negative, if your vertex is below the x-axis and you're going and the parabola goes down, no x-intercepts. Do you see how that works? It doesn't matter which quadrant you're in. It's the same idea every way you go. So in the first quadrant, if you have a vertex in quadrant number one or in quadrant number two, if A is positive, right, and your vertex is in the first or second quadrant, you're not going to have any x-intercepts. It's going to go up forever like that or like that. Do you see? Whereas if A was negative, it would go down and you'd have two x-intercepts. Now, if you're in the third quadrant, if your vertex is in the third quadrant and A is positive, you're going to have two x-intercepts, just like this. Whereas if you were here in the third quadrant with your vertex and a was negative, you're going to have no x-intercepts. So this little chart right here can kind of help you figure out how this is. Now, when you're just learning and figuring it out, this kind of chart can be really useful. So it might be a good idea to pause the video and write these down and maybe do a sketch of each one. But really, you got to be familiar with this where you don't have to look it up, right? Now, the thing we haven't talked about is the case where there is exactly one x-intercept. There's one x-intercept whenever your vertex is on the x-axis. You see, it's gonna, your, your parabola is going down, going down. It hits the vertex, which is the minimum value in this case, and it turns around and goes back up. So it, it doesn't actually kind of cross and go through. It just touches it. It intersects it just barely. And same here. 
just barely touches the x-axis and then it goes back down again, you see? Up and then down. So in the case where your vertex is on the x-intercept, on the x-axis, you're only going to have one, just one x-intercept. You see? All right. Now, let's talk about this just to make sure. Let, let's summarize this, right? If your x-intercept, if the vertex is on the x-axis, it doesn't matter what direction it is. You only have one x-intercept, right? You're going to have two x-intercepts. In the case that if A is negative, right? If A is negative, that means it's going down, right? If A is negative, then it's going down. If the vertex is above the x-axis and it's going down, so if you're in quadrant one or two and A is negative, you have two x-intercepts. If, if your vertex is in the third or fourth quadrant and A is positive, you're going to have two x-intercepts, right? If A is negative, if A is positive and you're in quadrant one or two, you have none. If A is negative and you're in quadrant three or four, you have no x-intercepts, right? Now, there is, there are other methods that we can use to find out how many x-intercepts are going to be. But this is, again, just visual, right? So you can look at an equation without having to do a whole lot of math, especially if it's in vertex form, and you can just know. Now, there are zero x-intercepts, once again, as we were saying, is if, if A is negative, so if the leading coefficient is negative, and you start off below the x-axis, no x-intercepts. If A is positive and you start off above the x-axis, no x-intercepts. So let's see a picture of that because, you know, like Homer Simpson says, picture good, word bad. So look, vertex here and this red graph, the vertex here, it's in the first quadrant. It's above the x-axis and it's going up. No x-intercepts. Or if your vertex is below the x-axis and it's going down, no x-intercepts. Whereas you're going to have two if it's the other way around. If you start off and your vertex is above and it goes down, the parabola goes down, you're going to have two x-intercepts, one here, one here. Whereas if your vertex is in the, is below the x-axis and the parabola is going up because A is positive, two x-intercepts. The reason why this is important is because finding x-intercepts is a lot of work. There are three ways you can do it. You can use inverse operations. You can factor. You can use the quadratic formula. Right. And so if you were asked to find something like this, what's the vertex? Sorry, what are the x intercepts of this? You'd have to do all of this work. Unless you realized, wait a minute, the vertex is positive four, negative 20, positive four and negative 20, positive four. Hold on. Let's see here. Let's see. Positive four. Let's see. Positive four and negative 20. That is going to be in the fourth quadrant, right? That's below the x-axis. If you're below the x-axis, if you're in that quadrant, well then, if you're in that quadrant and it's going down, there's no x-intercepts. There we go. So you wouldn't even have to do all this work. Now, when you do all this work and you get the square root of a negative, that also means that the square root of a negative, that's not a number on the x-axis, on the x -axis, so there aren't any x-intercepts. But you could just look and see also. If you know quadrant is 4, negative 20, that's in the fourth quadrant. A is negative, it's going down. Boom, you're done. All right, so in conclusion, if you can determine right away by looking at the vertex, and there's two ways you can find the vertex. You can just read it off a of vertex form, or you can use the formula if you're in standard form. If you can find the vertex, all you got to do is look at it and its relationship to the x-axis above or below, and look at the sine of a. That's it. So if you had a, a question like this, it said graph the following equation. You know, you got to find two x-intercepts, a y-intercept, and a vertex, right? Two x-intercepts, a y-intercept, and a vertex. I would suggest the first thing you do is find the y-intercept. It's always the easiest thing to do. It's 0, negative 8 for this. Then find the vertex because if you find the vertex of this, right, and you find out that, like, well, you see how a is positive? You see how a is positive? If the vertex for this one is in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2, then you don't even need to find this at all. Do you see? Whereas A is positive here. So if you find out the quadrant that the vertex is in quadrants three over here or four over here, A is positive, it's going up, then you're going to have two x-intercepts. So you need to go ahead and do the work. There you go. So check this out. Let's try these. See how many x-intercepts there are going to be by looking, by finding the vertex and then comparing that vertex or looking at, find the vertex, figure out which quadrant it is in, and then that in conjunction with the sine of a, figure out how many x-intercepts are going to be. Yeah, give it a shot. Now, the, these are right here. These are in vertex form. 
This is actually a really easy one, because if you remember, if b equals 0, as in ax squared plus bx plus c, if b equals 0, your y-intercept, your vertex are the same, so this one's really easy. These are the two that are trickiest, so you're going to want to use the formula for those, negative b over 2a, and then you plug it in. So if you've been following along with this series of lessons or you're in my classes and you at this point, you already know what that is. If not, I'll put a link in the description so you can kind of look that up and, and familiarize yourself with the vertex formula. So anyway, this video is not, this, this, this lesson is not like a huge skill. It's something that you can use to save yourself some time on a test. I hope it's been helpful. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it, like it, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I hope you guys have a good day. I'll hope to talk to you soon.